Hello everybody, Gilligan Kruger, 0829 here, and welcome to the fourth and final day of my Pirates of the Caribbean movie review marathon. Today is the one you've all been waiting for. I am reviewing Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. I saw it at midnight this morning. Sorry I couldn't get you a reaction video. I was busy and forgot my camera. So I'll try to sum up everything in this review, but before I get into that, I want to review my thoughts on the franchise as a whole. And I'll basically be repeating points I made about the last three movies in my reviews, if you've seen them, so you'll probably be familiar with them. Alright, so obviously let's start with The Curse of the Black Pearl. It came out in 2003, and was loved by both critics and fans alike. It had a really high-raising story that was loved. It The scenery was great, the location was great, and it introduced us to Jack Sparrow, who's probably the most memorable, well, one of the most memorable Disney characters we've gotten in the last 25 years. And because this movie did very, very, very well at the box office, in 2004, writers Ted Elliott and Terry Rousseau started planning the next two sequels. And it wasn't until 2006, though, that we got Dead Man's Chest, the first of a two-movie arc that would, at the point they thought, conclude the franchise. This took a bit of a different turn from the first one, as they it went a little bit more fantasy and a little less reality. I This was a clever design on their part, since... They, some of the good things about this one were better, and some of the bad things were worse. I admired the special effects even more. I'm still blown away by them, and I thought the villain was better. But the big issue was it had the same feeling that Lord of the Rings The Two Towers had, and that's, it just felt like it was there to link us to the final chapter. So it kind of fell back on that, and the fact that we didn't like the cliffhanger ending. So, yeah. But, yes, then, less than a year later, we got Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at World's End. This movie was mainly based off of its score and scope, I think, and because of that, it kind of fell back on its characters and storyline, which I felt were either overdeveloped or underdeveloped occasionally. The good things were pretty magnificent, though, and that's what saved it. Even though I said it in my review it, I felt like it's a bit of a more of an acquired taste than anything else, I still think it is the weakest of the three. Just my thoughts. So, how does four stand up, you may ask? Well, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's dive right in. Alright, so, On Stranger Tides begins one dark night. You've got two Spanish sailors who are just reeling up fish, as net hunters do, but this time they pull up a corpse that has been floating at sea. But as it pulls up aboard, it actually wakes up and looks at them. So they know there's something up about this, and they take them to King Ferdinand in Spain. And here, the survivor says that he's the last member of Ponce de Leon's crew. But this is has to be ridiculous. Ponce de Leon died about 200 years before the events of this movie even occurred. And before the survivor dies, though, he says he does, in fact, know the location of the Fountain of Youth. So, cut to London, England. We have Gibbs, played again by Kevin McNally, is about to be tried and hanged for a cut accusations of being Jack Sparrow and piracy crimes. But the mysterious judge who we know, but nobody else knows, as Jack, manages to free him and attempts to get them out of the country. Unfortunately, they are captured, and Jack is taken forward in front of King George, who's played by Richard Griffiths. And just to save you from spending most of the movie wondering who it is, because I know a lot of people in the theater were saying, like, who is that? I know I've seen that before. That is the man who does play Uncle Vernon in the Harry Potter movies. But you'll probably recognize him now. Also, we're reintroduced to Barbosa, who has given up his pirate ways to be a privateer, now serving in the British Royal Navy. This doesn't last long, though, for once again, Jack escapes, and this time he does make it out, thanks to the help of his father, Captain Ple Teague, 
played by Rolling Stone's hero and the inspiration for Jack Sparrow, Keith Richards. The, he has a bit more of a developed scene this time, and where he's telling Jack Sparrow not to go looking for the Fountain of Youth, that it will be the end of him. It will ruin him, it will destroy him, yada yada. But he's not the only one from Jack's past that's resurfacing. Jack also meets Angelica, a sexy pirate mistress and his former love interest, played by Penelope Cruz. There's a short talk between them at a sword fight, but eventually Angelica drugs him. And when Jack next wakes up, he's on the Queen Anne's Revenge. This is, of course, the ship that is run by Blackbeard, the fierce pirate, in here played by Ian McShane. Now, Blackbeard, as well as Angelica, sees Jack as a tool to get to the Fountain of Youth, and that's what they want to use him for. And it's worse because they're not the only ones going after it. We've also got Barbosa, the British Navy are going after it, and even the Spanish are trying to destroy it, so much that they will just go by any ship. They're that determined. Now, you've probably heard from several early reviews that this movie sucks. And I've even read one review that said it was worse than the last Airbender last year. Now, I have good news and bad news. The good news is, it's not a bad movie. I, in fact, I found it very entertaining and fun in some places. The bad news is, it just isn't a great film. In fact, I know fans will be disappointed. Not because it's bad, but because the others were just so good. Like, this one has a bit of a slow start. And there are some chase scenes that feel a little bit more silly than sensible, especially in the beginning. And we also have the problem that's kind of feel like it's echoing some of the last movies. Like, there's a floorboard, ceiling, pl plank, f sword fight in the beginning, which almost mirrors the one from the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie between Will and Jack and the blacksmiths. But... Apart from that, I do think the good stuff does outweigh the bad. I think there's a lot here to be liked. Uh, the story is different in this one. It's not as fantastical. This one, I feel, is more of like a traditional treasure hunt movie and kind of reminds us of the Errol Flynn pirate movies of the old days. I have just seen clips of those, but that this is kind of what I think of when I think of a pirate movie because it's about treasure hunting. There are small things that are thrown in, and that's kind of cool, but it sticks to what it is, and it knows what it's supposed to be. Orlando Bloom and Keira Knightley, as you've probably heard, are not here. God. So we don't have an overdeveloped, drawn-out romance. We do, though, however, have a small romance, which is not all that bad, since it isn't given too much time to. It's between a clergyman who's been dragged upon the Queen Anne's revenge, He's he is named Philip. He's played by newcomer Sam Shifflin, and we also have a mermaid named Serena, who saves him in one scene. She's played by... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I, I'm going to do the best job I can. Astrid Berger's Frisbee, I I've heard that she's both Spanish and French from multiple sites. That would explain a lot, but sorry if I pronounced it wrong. These two have kind of a small romance between each other, and I actually couldn't believe this, but I actually cared about it more than some of the other things in the movie. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was clever. There's betrayal. There's love. There's meeting some Pierre Pillels. There's the fact that you're different. It's a bit routine, but I... Don't know, I kind of enjoyed it, actually. A lot of people are bashing the movie about it, and I will kind of agree with it that it is... It does feel, in certain cases, that it is just there because we need a new romance. I don't think we did. And we don't really get to know them as much as you'd like, so we can't really relate to them all that well. In fact, actually, though, I think the mermaids are the best new addition to this movie, hands down, because Disney is famous for what they've done with mermaids. Like, we're, these do at first feel like classic Disney mermaids. They are attractive, 
And yes, I do include Ariel from The Little Mermaid in that group. And they... One even sings at one point. But... Even though they do have the good looks of a Disney mermaid, and one even looks like Amanda Seyfried, don't expect any renditions of Under the Sea or Part of Your World in this. Because, ugh. Let's just put it this way. These things don't want you to be part of their world. They want you to be part of their dinner. They are vicious. So... If they had a mermaid song, it wouldn't go anything like this. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? What you're more likely to hear is something along the lines of, Come try this stuff, isn't it great? It's more delicious than what I just ate. More like, imagine vampire mermaids, and that's what you've got, because... When these things come in, they are freaky. They... I'm not sure how mermaids were originally drawn out in mythology, but I kind of like this concept. And this is more like... the sirens from Greek mythology, and I applaud it. I thought it was just an interesting twist, especially since Disney has made mermaids into such sweet characters from their animated films that this was a very welcome change. I could go on all day about how much I like these mermaids, but I'll just sum it up like this. I liked Emma Roberts more after I saw Scream 4, and for the same reason, I like mermaids more after seeing this movie. And I'll also say that these Beautiful, but very vicious creatures would easily give the fish from Piranha 3D, if you allow me, a swim for their money. They're freaky. Let's just leave it at that. The also thing I have to... The other thing blah, blah, I have to comment on is some of the minor characters, I don't think they're given very much screen time, but they do what they have to. I think there's a definite effort in this, and... We've got small characters that reappear, and they're not really explained, and it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing, just because I would have liked to see more of these. Some of these characters are underdeveloped. In fact, I actually think Jack is a bit underdeveloped in this movie, as crazy as that sounds, but I was surprised that this he wasn't in as much of this movie as I thought. Now, granted, this does have the shortest runtime of any of the four, but still, he is the main character. Now, the one big problem I have with this movie is its antagonist, Blackbeard, who I easily think is the most disappointing movie villain since The Fallen from Transformers 2 in 2009. Why do I think this? It's because two reasons, mainly. First off, this franchise has actually given us some really, really good baddies. Like, in the first one, we had Barbosa. He was dark and... Could be scary on sometimes, but he was entertaining. He was enjoyable. I liked his antics. I liked his policies. He was fun. And the same thing for Davy Jones in the second one. Bill Nye made him a good character. Granted, he was a little bit more evil than entertaining, but he was kind of a perfect blend of both. And I loved what they did with these special effects, like with the tentacle beard and the octopus face and all that. You even had smaller, less... Let me think, what's the word I'm doing? Well, villains that gave less of an impression, like Cutler Beckett, played by Tom Hollander. He wasn't really entertaining or fun, but he played the role so well. He was really subtle. Like, you knew this guy wanted to kill all these pirates off, but he was pretty calm about it. And I really have to give him credit for this. And the second reason is... He's Blackbeard! He's the most evil pirate. Well, one of the most evil pirates. I'm not a pirate expert. Most infamous. Most infamous. There we go. Thank you. I thought of Blackbeard as being a, pretty much like Barbosa and Jones, as being evil but entertaining and have this dark tone to him that you can see, but you still like him overall as a bad guy. And I just think he was a little bit too hammy in this movie. I... Don't really blame the actor Ian McShane. I mainly blame the lines he had to say. Like, he had lines along the 
along the sorts of, um, I'm a very evil man, and if I don't kill someone every once in a while, people will forget who I am, which aren't necessarily bad lines, they just seemed out of context and out of place. I was really looking forward to how this movie was going to handle Blackbeard, and I was very disappointed for, because of it. So, sorry Blackbeard, but you're not going to be up with Jafar, Frollo, or Maleficent as one of my favorite Disney villains anytime soon. So, let's get down to it. What do I think of the movie as a whole? I've said about as many good things as I have bad things. Overall, I think it's fun, entertaining, and definitely, as I said before, has the feeling of an earlier Errol Flynn pirate movie. It's definitely an entertaining romp. Uh, I like the story, I like the characters, well, besides, well, almost all of the characters, Blackbeard is off the list, and I even don't mind the small subplots, but I'm falling back on the slow start and the very disappointing villain. I can't hit on that enough that I really thought Blackbeard was going to be a very entertaining character, but he wasn't. That really saddened me. So, how does it compare to the other three? I'm going to say I liked it more than At World's End, and about as much as Dead Man's Chest. I am recommending this movie. I had a good time at it, but I know a lot of people will be disappointed by this. Um, it was, but it was enter it was enjoyable to me, and I'm guessing there will be at least some things you'll like about this movie. It's not a last Airbender bad. I still can't get over that comment. It kind of gave me the feeling that Matrix Revolutions had, and the fact that I wouldn't mind seeing more, but I'd like to wait a while before. I I see any extra. There have been talks about 5 and 6, but Johnny Depp has said he wants to take a break for a little while, and I don't blame him. I think we all could use a break. But the bottom line is, I think it's a good installment. I enjoyed it. I recommend it. I thought it was a lot of fun. So, as it all rounds up, I'm going to give Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides three and a half stars out of four, sorry, out of five, and it was a good way to end the series review, and I wouldn't mind seeing the movie again, but not in over-excessiveness. And that is the end of my Pirates of the Caribbean series review. You can find all my movie reviews on my YouTube channel. If you have a movie you'd like me to review, comment on this video or on my channel as a whole. And until next time, peace! Arrgh!